We can all agree that the Komodo dragon is the coolest lizard alive today, but things just got even cooler. As of this year, scientists have discovered that Komodo dragons have coatings of iron along their serrations and tips of their teeth. This makes Komodo dragons the only animals in the world that have teeth like this. Now, the function of this iron cap is to help maintain the rigidity of the tooth and then also help keep the tooth extra sharp as it's slicing and cutting through prey. Just like a lot of meat-eating dinosaurs, Komodo dragons have a xiphodont tooth structure. Their teeth are laterally compressed with fine serrations on the edge. These are adaptations for slicing and cutting through their prey. The pebbly skin of Komodo dragons are covered in osteoderms. We have a couple of great examples on this replica skull. In Komodo dragons, osteoderms act as a kind of chainmail. Many different kinds of dinosaurs also had modified osteoderms. This Stegosaurus thagomizer or tail spike is a great example of just how weird some dinosaur osteoderms got. Now, osteoderms are bony deposits that grow in the skin of an animal and are not part of the skeleton. In Komodo dragons, osteoderms acted as defense against struggling prey and combat between other Komodo dragons, particularly against two males that are fighting each other. How cool is that? Really, the only areas of a Komodo dragon that are not covered in osteoderms are parts of the skull and the area around the parietal eye, or third eye. Wait, what? The parietal eye, or third eye as it's sometimes called, is a light-sensing organ. It's located right here on the skull of this Komodo dragon. Now, Komodo dragons aren't unique in the sense that they have a parietal eye. Many different animals have them, including most species of lizard and the rhynchocephalian lizard-like Tuatara on the island of New Zealand. Just like snakes and other monitor lizards, Komodo dragons have a forked tongue. This is their other super sense. So when the tongue retreats back into the mouth, airborne molecules that were collected are sent up to the roof of the mouth to an organ called the Jacobson's organ. Think of the tips of the tongue almost like a metal detector. If food particles are more concentrated on the right side of the tongue, then the Komodo dragon knows to look right for food. In some cases, Komodo dragons can detect food with this sense from over 10 kilometers away. You can't outrun a Komodo dragon. Many species of lizard struggle to breathe while they run. They have very poor stamina, but Komodo dragons and other monitors have bypassed this issue via gular pumping. This is when the muscles in their throat expand and contract to force air into their mouth. This enables Komodo dragons to be very efficient ambush predators that can run their prey down in short bursts. Another adaptation that Komodo dragons have that makes them perfect predators is the fact that they're freaking venomous. For the longest time, we thought that Komodo dragons had septic bacteria in their saliva that helped bring their prey down. We now know that this is not the case. It turns out, in a study made in 2013, that Komodo dragons and a lot of other species of monitor have venom glands located in their lower jaw, just like the ones seen in Gila monsters. Now, we found that a bite from a Komodo dragon, as well as several other species of monitor lizard, can induce effects like blood loss, blood clotting, shock, and severe pain that can last for hours on end. Whew, I'll tell you what, I would not want to get bitten by a Komodo dragon. As if Komodo dragons couldn't get any cooler, they can also reproduce via parthenogenesis, virgin births. 
Parthenogenesis is a form of asexual reproduction, where an animal can produce offspring without the assistance of a male. The reason why Komodo dragons do this, some researchers speculate, is because if a female were to arrive in an isolated ecological niche, like on an island, she can use parthenogenesis to produce male offspring, to start a sexual reproducing population on a totally new environment. Many different animals can use parthenogenesis, including sharks, crocodiles, some bird species like the California condor can use parthenogenesis, and that means that dinosaurs may have been able to use parthenogenesis as well. I wonder if a dinosaur ever arrived on an island and used parthenogenesis to populate a new ecosystem. That would be amazing. You would expect with something prehistoric like the Komodo dragon, we would find their fossils all the way back to the Cretaceous. However, the oldest fossils of Komodo dragons are just under 4 million years old, and they come from Australia. Komodo dragons got their start in the land down under and migrated out into the islands of Indonesia. On the island of Flores during the Pleistocene, they were the apex predator, a position that they still hold today in Flores. During the Pleistocene, there were dwarf proboscideans, or elephant relatives like Stegodon, that were likely preyed upon by Komodo dragons. What's even scarier to think was that there was even a species of human relative, Homo floriensis, that was just over a meter tall that would have seen Komodo dragons. I wonder if a Komodo dragon would have eaten the occasional Homo floriensis when they weren't careful. These tiny human relatives just went extinct 50,000 years ago. The Komodo dragons outlasted them and are still there today. A lot of these amazing scientific discoveries have only been discovered in the last couple of years. There's still so much we have left to learn about the world's largest living lizard. If you learned something new about Komodo dragons, be sure to leave a comment down below. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about the amazing biology of Komodo dragons, come check us out at the Tyrannosaurus.